The earnings season is all but at an end. Hello, I'm Kyle Rodder, and in this week's Investor Spotlight, we'll preview the ASX reporting season and some of the hits and misses. And as always, to help me through this, Danny Akuye from Ausbiz joins me at the desk. Danny, great to see you there. Um, let's talk about just the broader markets uh, for this reporting period. How did it go? Yeah, basically the underlying trend is down in terms of earnings as well as the outlook. And what was really noticeable is that uh, companies continue to cite higher costs, although there are some signs of that moderating. But they also management, they're either really cautious on the outlook or no outlook. And the bottom line is consensus earnings for this year that is just finished fiscal full year 23, have basically come down to 1.8% compared to 2.5% at the end of July. And for the forecast year ahead, they've come down to minus 5.4% compared to minus 0.8%. And this chart, really interesting. You can see companies are slashing their dividends. Uh, even with profits going up. And that's kind of really important. It shows how cautious it, that they are. Yeah, exactly. Trying to protect their balance sheets for what to come. We'll have to ask and wait and see, I guess. But um, let's talk about some of the companies that you did cover uh, for Investor Spotlight over the course of this earnings season. And uh, we'll start with BHP. How did it go? Yeah, the big Australian, unfortunately, was a miss, uh, both on the top line and the bottom line, but also on the dividends. And that share price fell about 1.4% on the day. And just remember, everybody, it's got 60% exposure to iron ore, so it's really exposed to the vagaries of commodity prices, also high costs. They've also tipped up their capital expenditure going forward, so analysts are really concerned about the dividend coming down. And uh, yeah, so a bit of a miss on that one. And just here, if you have a look at the analysts, you can basically see that if we compare to, let's say in May, well, or actually May and June, uh, we have one less hold and we now have two sales. I mean, still a lot of analysts there with a strong buy or a buy, but really a lot sitting there in that hold category. Yeah, indeed. Okay, so a bit neutral there on BHP, but let's um, move across to Qantas now yes. and uh, get a sense of how it traded. And uh, well, overall, perhaps a positive set of numbers, although um, maybe the, uh, the dividend policy and some of the ways that the business is returning capital to shareholders raised a few eyebrows. Uh, no, I th well, it, it, look, the market liked it. It yeah. was very much in line with expectations. The, the share price rallied 3.2%, but it was actually in line with the May forecast. Net profit of $2.5 billion. Most important thing is that you've got domestic pri uh, ticket prices up 4%, international ticket prices up 10% on pre-pandemic levels. Share buyback was lifted to $500 million. No dividend declared as expected. Um, they've ordered some more Boeing Dreamliners and some Airbuses. They still have 133 new aircraft to take delivery of between full year 24 and 29. But it's cheap. It's on 5.8 times earnings, which to me, um, Kyle, really says that the market doesn't believe that this YOLO travel is going to persist. <laughs> no, well, it certainly hasn't for me. Um, let's have a look at what the analysts are saying about Qantas now. Um, what's uh, what's oh. the story there? Uh, yeah, in terms of the actual changes um, for Qantas, there really weren't too many. We've got two strong strong buyers, 12 buyers, two holds, and that has not changed throughout the course of the year. Just in terms of share price targets, uh, we have a mean target from Refinitiv of $8.27 compared to FN Arena at $7.75. So um, yeah, it's cheap and it's got 11% upside, but I'm not sure the market is completely convinced. Yeah, okay, so that's Qantas there. Let's go to CSL, one that, uh, well, folks were very much uh, keenly anticipating going into this reporting season. And well, we spoke about the sort of technical setup perhaps and the very 
uh, wide range that stock traded in still remains around that level and perhaps, well, maybe a bit of a mixed neutral reception from investors to the results? Yeah, really interesting because if anything, they were a little bit disappointing, but the market took heart and the share price rallied 4.3%. Look, really, the bottom line is plasma production um, collection is back at record levels, but the plasma collection costs are still too high. Um, most importantly, um, the currency fluctua fluctuations hit the stock. That was really well flagged in June. Um, the outlook, the most important thing for CSL is ongoing improvement in margins. Um, the average share price target around $330 according to FN Arena, slightly lower for Refinitiv at $321. And uh, for those of you that are keen on the dividend, it will go ex-dividend on the September 11th. And the dividend was actually up 13% this year to US $1.29. Interesting. And uh, the analysts, any sort of movement or changes there in terms of the calls? Uh, yeah, so we now have, compared to in May, we now have two, uh, two more strong buys. So it's gone from three to two to four. And also the uh, buys have moved from a buy to a strong buy. And there's only one sell on the stock. Interesting. OK, last but not least, let's talk about Rio, another miner there. Um, perhaps one that was also well sold off into these results somewhat or has done over the last month or so, uh, a number of factors behind that. But how do you think the market receives the actual uh, full year uh, figures from, from Rio? Yeah, disappointing. Um, the shares sold off, they were down because this reports before London opened, so it was off 0.7% in London trade. Um, the most important thing, this has a much higher iron ore exposure, 84% of earnings. Although they did get costs a little bit under control, it's still a problem. Underlying earnings were down 37%. Again, everyone is really concerned about the dividend going forward. Okay, Historically, really high payout ratios. This one's moving from a 65% payout ratio to 50%. So I think investors generally concerned in the major miners here. Um, in terms of share price targets, FN Arena around $114, Refinitiv around $121. And just in terms of the broker moves there, um, interestingly enough, they've become a little bit more bullish in terms of uh, we have more buy recommendations compared to May and less hold recommendations. So obviously analysts feeling that this is somewhat discounted in the share price. Danny. Really appreciate uh, your insights, obviously, this reporting season and helping us wrap things up today. Danny Akilio from Ausbiz there. Thank you, Carl. Okay, well, that does do it for this edition of Investor Spotlight. Tune in next week where we'll put another investment theme under the spotlight.